On the 19th of December 1943, whilst the Second World War raged on, three German soldiers and one Soviet collaborator were brought to the gallows in front of a huge crowd in the city of Kharkov. Kharkov was a battle-scarred city, and for those 50,000 people who witnessed the executions of these enemy soldiers, the gallows served as some form of justice for the suffering they had encountered during the conflict. Each of the men were left kicking in midair as the executioners kicked out the stool from underneath them. But these were German soldiers and collaborators who were executed as the war was going on. The Soviets would carry out swift and brutal justice against these people. They would not wait for the Second World War to come to an end, but would in their own cities enact their revenge against the Germans, who caused a huge amount of chaos and slaughter, when they launched Operation Barbarossa. Join us today as we look at the executions of the German soldiers of Kharkov, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Following the launching of Operation Barbarossa, Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union, the German army rampaged through the Soviet lands, and Kharkiv or Kharkov would become a focus of many major battles. The city was captured by the Nazis and placed under occupation on the 24th of October 1941, and a Red Army offensive failed to recapture the city in May 1942. It would be retaken in February 1943, but a month later would fall again to the Germans. This put the city and the people of it under a significant amount of danger and stress, and before the occupation there were a huge amount of refugees who remained in the city. But the Jewish population would be slaughtered by the German army. They and the Einsatzgruppen, the SS death squads, would carry out a huge amount of slaughter in and around the city, and they would between December 1941 and January 1942 massacre and then bury around 15,000 Jews in a ravine outside of a nearby town. These had been taken from Kharkov, but also around 30,000 residents were executed by the Germans as they were suspected of being Soviet partisans, and 80,000 people also died from hunger, disease and the cold. Further horror occurred as 60,000 people were forcibly transported to Germany to work as slave labourers, but others were also sent to concentration camps. By the time the city was liberated, the population had been reduced to under 200,000, and 70% of the city had been destroyed. It was said in one article that the city was more battered than perhaps any other Soviet city, except Stalingrad. But all around the lands, the Germans would commit a significant amount of slaughter and execution. But when the city was liberated for the last time, the officials inside would then try to punish war criminals who had conducted horror in Kharkov. Further atrocities were committed by the Wehrmacht and Einsatzgruppen, including hangings and the use of gas vans. The Gestapo would round up and shoot 435 patients who were being treated inside of a local hospital, and many of these were elderly people and children. In March 1943, there were 800 Red Army soldiers who were also shot, and many others were burned alive. The Soviets would state that in the Kharkov region, the German fascist invaders had shot, hanged, burned alive, and poisoned by carbon monoxide gas more than 30,000 peaceful, completely innocent citizens, including women, old people and children. But the Soviets would uncover the mass graves of the victims, there were virtually no Jews who had survived the German occupations. But then a trial was summoned in December 1943, this was known as the Kharkov Trial. The point of this was to bring four war criminals to justice, and these were men who had been linked to implementing the policies of the Germans, which resulted in such horror and bloodshed. There were four defendants who had been captured and brought forward, despite hundreds committing crimes in the city. These defendants were three Germans, Wilhelm Langheld, who was 52 years old, Reinhard Retzlaff, who was 36, Hans Ritz, a 24-year-old man, and one Soviet collaborator, Mikhail Bulanov, who was 26. The Germans were members of the Wehrmacht, the police and SS forces, and Bulanov was a man who was accused of treason against his homeland. All of the men were charged under Soviet and international law, and Langheld, Retzlaff and Ritz were accused of participating in the murder and slaughter of Soviet soldiers. The officials presiding over the court were military men, and a six-person forensic team provided witness and expert testimony, in which they documented the shootings and also the use of gas. They would tell the courtroom of the suffering of the victims. It was claimed that these men, the defendants, 
were Teutonic Knights of the Great Eastern Expanse, who daily and hourly carried out Hitler's orders, without feeling good feelings and pity, destroyed civilians who were proud of their cruelty, considering these subhuman worthy of only mass destruction. Their actions led to many thousands of residents mercilessly having violated their rights to live, and their rights to defence. They would claim that everyday killings and executions entered the flesh and blood of the executioners, including the Gestapo, and that the defendants were absolutely alien to the idea of good, and they had no organ for its perception. The defence of the four men said that they had been just following orders, and this was acknowledged, but was rejected as a sufficient defence, and because of this the four men were found guilty of their crimes, and were then sentenced to death. The court found that Wilhelm Langheld had been personally involved in a number of cases, in which 100 innocent Soviet prisoners of war and civilians were shot and then executed. Hans Ritz had directed the shootings which were carried out by the SD Einsatzgruppe in Tagarog, and it was found that he beat prisoners with rods and truncheons, and tortured them for information and false statements. Reinhard Retzlaff was found guilty of torturing Soviet civilians and trying to get false statements from them. It was said he ripped out their hair and tortured them with needles and would order the executions of dozens of civilians. It was said he also drove prisoners into a murder van and these citizens were then gassed, with Retzlaff then overseeing the burning of their bodies after. Mikhail Bulanov, the Soviet, was found guilty of betraying the Soviet motherland and he voluntarily sided with the Germans and worked for them as a chauffeur for the Kharkov Gestapo branch. He took part in the executions of civilians using gas vans and also drove civilians to their executions where they were then shot. When the evidence and verdicts were announced to the courtroom, the room turned to stone as these men were found guilty of being machines of mass murder and in particular the treason of Bulanov hurt the Soviets. This was a man of the city who was a cog in the machine of mass murder of these people. But the routine killing of people shocked everyone. The men did all plead guilty and they admitted their crimes and described them in detail. But the Soviets would not wait to carry out the executions of the men found guilty at the Kharkov trial. The very next day the four men were taken out into the public square of Kharkov for their execution. It was the 19th of December 1943 and at the time in the war, vicious fighting would still be erupting. But in Kharkov, there were 50,000 people who came to see the executions of the German soldiers. There were four gallows, which had been made in the town, and each of the men were brought out into the square for their execution. They were accompanied by a number of guards and officials. Thousands of people were gathered around, and they saw the men hanged. It was said of the executions. It was all over in a few moments. The defendants were hoisted into the back of four open trucks and stood on stools. Then the nooses were looped around their necks. There was no blindfolding. During the preliminaries, three of the four prisoners had to be propped up. Bulanov had fainted. Ritz and Retzlav had turned pasty white. They drooled at their mouths and their knees gave way. Only Langheld, the old soldier, remained stiff as a ramrod throughout, never once flinching. Once the nooses had been adjusted, at a signal the trucks pulled away and the four were left dangling and kicking in midair. For the people of Kharkov, the executions of the men who had worked for the SS, the German army and the Gestapo, was some form of revenge and reprisal for the suffering of the people inside the city. It was a city which suffered greatly and for many people these were the most evil war criminals. But there were many more who committed crimes during Operation Barbarossa who were never brought to justice. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.